when you have properties in areas where the level of risk for tenants not paying their rent is fairly high, you want to nip that in the bud. Or is it nip it in the butt? I never understood this. Is it nip it in the butt or nip it in the butt? Because right now in Cleveland, what Section 8 is paying for three ones like this one, they're paying about 1200 bucks, folks. I'll see you guys later. Yep. Nope, they're good. good. Derek is always in the way. FYI. Pro tip, when you're screening for tenants and you have tenants that tell you they want to grow a garden in their house, you should immediately deny those tenants. Welcome to the Investment Properties for Sale show, folks. Thing is selling at or above list. We are going to provide you guys with complete transparency and education. We take you to the video tour. Won't watch TV, giving it to you straight. People are traveling, traveling from all over the globe. To little old Cleveland for that Section 8 cash flow, y'all. That Section 8 cash flow, right? Cleveland's probably, I don't know, like top five, top three list of best cash flow markets for investors because the property's just like this. 934 Royal Road, okay? I got this thing at 39.9. Now, a mom and pop landlord is running this thing, and they are currently charging 8.25. Now, you might be thinking, well, 39.9, 8.25 in rent, that's okay. If I run the numbers, it's kind of cool. But they're missing, uh, they're missing it right now. They're missing all that meat on the bone, that meat that I got for you guys, right? Because right now in Cleveland, what Section 8 is paying for three ones like this one, they're paying about 1200 bucks, folks. Now, that means this particular property can be increased almost 400 bucks eventually, right? Now, currently, these folks that are living there, they are not Section 8 tenants. They are cash-paying tenants, and according to the seller, they've had no issues with them paying their rent, right? But you guys should not buy any rental property uh, based upon the tenants that are currently living there. No, that would be dumb. What you need to do is you need to buy rental properties based upon the tenant base, based upon what is replicable multiple times, right? Me, myself, having sold $200 million worth of real estate in the Cleveland market, you know who I talk to a lot? Rental property owners, landlords. Talk to them all day, right? Everyone's trying to Work with Holton Wise to sell their house or have Holton Wise buy their house or things of that nature, right? People that got rentals, they reach out to us at some point, right? Almost all of them do. And they all talk about selling their property to us. And you know what they always seem to have in common? Every one of these sellers, they all got the greatest tenants in the world. Their tenants are different than other tenants. Like, oh, yeah, I see the tenants from Hell's Show, James. But my tenants, they're different. They're awesome. Oh, really? That's interesting. You want to sell, though. If your tenants are so great, why do you want to sell, right? And I tell you that because I tell you how important it is to understand that you guys are not buying a tenant, okay? You're buying a market, a market rate, a specific tenant. So for better or for worse, y'all, what you're going to hear about the current tenants should be something you consider, but that's not something you need to pay attention for the long haul, right? Like for the long haul, this property is a property that should be bringing you 1200 bucks from a Section 8 tenant. Right now, it's not. Right now, it's bringing you eight and a quarter, but you're not buying eight and a quarter tenants forever. You're buying $1,200 tenants. You got to get that rent up. But I'd give you the same advice if the current tenant was paying $2,000 a month. I'd be like, look, these folks are paying $2,000 a month, but that's not replicable. What's replicable is $1,200 a month from Section 8 tenants, not $2,000 from cash paying tenants, right? So for better or for worse, folks, you got to take what's going on with the current tenant with a grain of salt. Whether the current tenant sucks and needs to be evicted, okay, great, fine. You evict that tenant, you move on. Or whether you believe everything every seller tells you and you think the current tenant's the greatest tenant in the history of the world, right? Let's be honest. They're probably not. They're probably going to average out to being that average type of tenant that you're going to get in an area like this, right? You're going to get your lower income tenant base, right? So if you end up with 100 properties like this, sure, some of them are, are going to have amazing tenants and some of them are going to have horrible tenants, but most of them, the whole portfolio that you have, it's kind of going to average out to the same level of performance 
that you're going to see in a given risk level, right? And when I talk about these risk levels, I'm referring to the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods, which you can click, uh, click to, go to, Google, whatever you want to do, right? We got the notes for it somewhere in and around this video. And I've graded all the neighborhoods on an A to F scale, A being lowest risk, F being higher risk, right? So this is uh, a higher risk neighborhood, okay? So when you're in a higher risk neighborhood like this, what you have to understand is it's low income, it's high risk. And when I say high risk, I really mean high risk of your rent not getting paid. And when your rent doesn't get paid, you have to pay money to do evictions, then when you evict people, you got to pay money to fix up your property. Then when you want to get new tenants in there, you got to pay money to get those new tenants in there, right? So I'm talking risk, risk of you losing money, risk of you not collecting the rent you want to collect. So that's why I say to you, if you're going to buy a particular property like this one, you're going to want to focus on what the market rate for Section 8 tenants are because Section 8 tenants are going to be the key to your success, right? Because when you have properties in areas where the level of risk for tenants not paying their rent is fairly high you want to nip that in the bud or is it nip it in the butt i never understood this is it nip it in the butt or nip it in the butt i think it's nip it in the bud because i think it's like referring to like gardening oh just so everybody's aware fy pro tip when you're screening for tenants and you have tenants that tell you they want to grow a garden in their house you should immediately deny those tenants any tenant who tells you during the tenant screening process that they love to garden and they ask you if they could put a garden in the yard you have to deny that tenant i actually have this video out it's called like 10 red flags that your tenant's gonna suck or something like that i don't know it's got a pretty decent amount of views and i talked about that i talked about you got to deny people that want to garden and i never actually went into full detail so there's like literally hundreds of comments like why does this guy hate fucking gardening dude what's wrong with this guy he's a fucking asshole gardens are cool just because people like to garden doesn't make them bad people i know motherfucker i know actually uh gardening in and itself does not make you a shitty person gardening is fine i have nothing against gardening here is is the the backstory behind that when a tenant tells you that they want to garden and they ask you if they could grow a garden in your yard during the tenant screening process you need to have a red flag alert going off in your brain because what they're really doing is they're trying to manipulate you they're trying to distract you you see that particular tenant knows uh that they are going to have a crummy work history crummy uh job and criminal record history a crummy credit history right they know that they are going to not look good on paper so they try to throw that out there to manipulate you like hey mr landlord i like to guard and i'm going to take such good care of your house i'm going to do the normal stuff i'm going to then improve it right they're trying to get you to drop your guard and ignore all the red flags that should tell you as a professional landlord that these people are pieces of shit who are not going to pay rent to you and they do that by trying to trick you and trying to make you think they're going to treat your house nicer than they are right anytime a tenant's ever done that that's the exact type of person they were. They are trying to manipulate you as a landlord. That, folks, is why I give the advice to deny anybody who talks to you at the showing about gardening, right? I don't have anything against folks that actually gardening. The actual act of gardening uh, is fine by me. Uh, it's tenants who try to manipulate us into accepting them in our rental properties when they are clearly a financial risk to us. Uh, that is the problem. Uh, and that's why you deny those people, right? So that's my story. And yeah, I think it's nipping in the bud and I think it is a gardening reference. But anywho, when you go section eight, you don't really have to worry about all that at all because the government doesn't need to manipulate you. The government doesn't need you to get your guard down because the government, for all the things they do wrong, the one thing they do right, folks, is they pay that rent to us Section 8 landlords every single month, right? So the current tenants that we have in there, uh, they appear to be pretty reasonably uh, stable tenants. They've been there for quite a while. Uh, the house is not perfect, but it's in pretty reasonable condition. Uh, I do not think they would want to move out because they can't get a house like this for eight and a quarter right now. So I think what you'd want to do is keep them in there as long as possible. You'll still cash flow at eight twenty-five, buying it as cheap as you can buy it for, right? Thirty-nine-nine. You'll still make some cash flow. Uh, but I would probably increase that up. I wouldn't go directly from eight and a quarter to that twelve hundred right away. 
away, though, because I think that would piss them off, and I think they'd move out. Uh, and if they're already in there, they're already stable, they're already taking decent care of your property, uh, that is something that is hard to accomplish uh, in lower-income neighborhoods like this, right? So I would say you got yourself a pretty solid tenant. So don't try to be in a hurry to push them out the door because you got greedy and you want that 1200 I would slowly raise their rent so you can keep them in your building, is in, in your house, rather, as long as you possibly can. And then eventually, when they do move out naturally on their own, which they will because this is the rental property game, folks. We're not buying tenants. We're buying properties. Tenants don't stay forever. Eventually, this family is going to move out. And when they do, you want to focus all of your attention on what the market is doing. And again, what the market is doing right now is providing you $1,200 a month in rent from Section 8 tenants. And that is going to be your end game. And if you are able to manage properties in rougher neighborhoods and you're able to deal with this type of stuff and you're able to handle the problems that are going to come along with lower income investing and Section 8 investing, I think this would be a solid deal for you. If that makes sense for you, send your offer to my team. Sales at HoltonWise.com. Cash offers are preferred but not required. You can also do financed offers. Uh, just send the amount you want to pay uh, to us at sales at .com. Let us know if it's cash, include proof of funds. Let us know if it's financed, include your pre-approval. If you need a pre-approval letter, we have those lenders who can provide that to you. They will loan to anybody in all 50 states, 30-year terms, 25% down fixed interest. If you're out of the USA, we can even hook you guys up with lenders, but you won't get the 30-year terms. You'll have to discuss with the lender specifically what your terms will be as. They're going to vary, obviously, based on where you live, things of that nature. And one more thing before I get out of here, uh, what you got to know also is the current seller, they have not gone through any of the Cleveland-led certification process. If that is a completely new phrase to you, you're like, wait, what? what's the Cleveland-led certification process? Bro, I never heard of that. I'm glad that you stuck around to the end of this video and heard me say that because whether or not you buy this property from me here today on Holton Wines TV, uh, if you're going to invest in the Cleveland market, you want to be a Section 8 investor in Cleveland, you want to own rental property in Cleveland, you need to know about the lead cert laws. Uh, they're brand new. They just came out. Not a lot of people know about them. Uh, this property will need to go through that process eventually, and you'll need to know how that process works. Uh, I don't think the cost will be very high because this is a vinyl-sided house, which is nice, and it's in pretty good shape. So I don't think it's going to be an egregious amount of money, but to show you how you'll go through that bidding process and actually get that done, I made a lead certification video tutorial for you guys. It's like a half hour long because the process is pretty confusing. The link to that will be below or above this video, wherever the notes are. Uh, so after this video, definitely check that video out. Watch that video. Understand how the lead process works and will affect you. And then submit your bids to my team, sales at HoltonWise.com. Yep. Nope, they're good. Pretty good. Derek is. I'm always in the way. TV on the board. One of the fancy porch TVs. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.